Sure, there are millions of stories out there that put billions of ideas in the common man's mind regarding the ruthlessness of gang members. However, some go to great lengths to prove those ideas to be highly true. Let's watch. Number 5. Abel Gallegos Abel Gallegos appeared in Jefferson County District Court and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus 163 years, for his role in the kidnapping and slaying 28-year-old Simon Duran. Gallegos and two others, Alonzo Quintana and Rene Francisco Rosales, were found guilty of multiple counts for their role in the retaliation slaying. Duran had identified Quintana in a lineup in an attempted slaying investigation in Adams County in early 2018. From there, she became a target of Gallegos, Quintana, and Rosales. On November 5, 2018, Duran was lured, kidnapped, shot 10 times as she begged for her life, and set on fire, according to authorities. Gallegos had approached Duran on social media and met with Rosales and others at a house in Denver. Duran, Gallegos, and Rosales left the house together, and Rosales went home. Gallegos took Duran to a parking lot on West Colfax and Kipling, where they had met Quintana. Quintana and Gallegos physically attacked Duran and imprisoned her in the back seat of a vehicle, authorities say. They then drove her to a dark, secluded spot at 7th and Nile in Golden, where Quintana and Gallegos shot her 10 times. Gallegos and Rosales later returned to the scene of her passing to pour gasoline on her body and set it on fire. This is Gallegos' sixth felony conviction and has been revoked on parole or probation eight times. Judge Philip McNulty, the sentencing judge in this case, said that he was appalled by the casualness of this crime and disregard of human life. This was a horrific crime. I, I am struck by the, the casualness in, in which it was committed, the absolute disregard. This is the result. This is where you will end up to serve the rest of your life in prison. You can't live among us anymore, Judge McNulty said. Number four, gang members. For more than an hour, Christopher Dean was brutally beaten by a 2x4 and a crowbar. He was sodomized with a handle-like object. Then he was shot twice in the back of the head and executed. His body was put in the trunk of a car and left at a Marta station in Atlanta. Christopher Dean was the father of two young children. They beat him to the point that his skull was actually depressed, that they were comfortable enough to let the evidence of the crime just sit for 30 days. On October 17, 2016, Fulton County prosecutors said Christopher Lockett invited Dean, 33, to the Atlanta home of 23-year-old Xavier Gibson and 30-year-old Orlando Gibson. The court got to see the comings and goings and essentially murder headquarters happening at Mr. Mr. Christopher Lockett's residence. As a result of the egregious nature of not only the injuries <clears throat> on count one criminal street gang activity, the state's gonna recommend 20 years to serve. On count two, malice murder, state's recommendation is life to serve without the possibility of parole. Dean thought it was going to be another drug deal with Lockett, like they'd done in the past. However, prosecutors said Lockett had learned that Dean was once a police witness in California. Lockett and other alleged members of the Gangster Disciples devised a plan to torture and end Dean to make an example out of him and to show other gang members that working as a police witness would not be tolerated, prosecutors said. Chris was getting his life on the right track. It was so very hard for me to tell a five-year-old his dad would never come home. In my opinion, this slaying represents the most horrific attack in our county in recent history, Fulton County District Attorney Paul Howard said. More than two years later, a jury convicted Lockett, Gibson, 23, Cates, Clark, 21, Rooks, and Green for slaying, felony slaying, participation in criminal street gang activity, and other related felonies. Stating the facts of the case were horrific, Fulton County Superior Court Judge Gail S. Tuzan sentenced all five of the defendants to life in prison. And, you know, to have your, your, your offspring leave the world before you do is, is a pretty sobering experience under any circumstances. Believe that um, completes what yes, you can give that to Mr. Lockett. Um, that completes the court sentencing um, in this case. Lockett was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Clark was sentenced to two consecutive life sentences plus five years. Green was sentenced to life in prison plus three years. Rooks and Gibson were each sentenced to life in prison. Number three, Carpio brothers. Two teen brothers were sentenced for their role in the 2013 fatal kniving of a student on the campus of Cleveland High School in Reseda. Anthony Carpio, 18, was sentenced to 16 years to life, and Michael Stephen Carpio, 20, was sentenced to 15 years to life. Los Angeles County Deputy District Attorney Scott Marcus said, Both Carpios were members of a street gang. 
They were each found guilty October 31 of one count of second degree against victim, 18-year-old Kevin Orlana, who was not a gang member. The Carpio brothers sat expressionless in the Van Nuys courtroom when Judge Martin Herskovitz pronounced sentence. Before sentencing, Marcus read a victim impact statement prepared by Orlana's family. As a parent, we plan to dance at their wedding, celebrate a promotion, look forward to possible grandchildren. The last thought we would ever have is that we will have to plan their funeral. The two brothers will not be eligible for parole until at least 2028. Number two, gang of three. After two days of deliberations, a jury found three men guilty of the slaying of the owner of a Clinton Township party store. Kenneth Hill, 27, and Jomar Robinson, 26, both of Clinton Township, and Darius Diaz Gaskin, 25, of Detroit, were tried together in Maycomb Circuit Court and found guilty of first degree armed robbery, felony firearm possession, and conspiracy to commit armed robbery. To the killers who murdered my brother in cold blood, I say this to you. You're an absolute disgrace to the human race. I hope that while you spent the rest of your life in prison, you actually reflect on the awful decisions you've made in your life. You have the blood of a loving father, husband, son, and brother on your hands. Hill, Robinson, and Diaz Gaskin all face life in prison without parole if found guilty. A fourth man, Clinton Grayson, 26, of Detroit, was sentenced earlier to life in prison without parole on first-degree felony slaying and other charges. According to the store's videotape, during the 1 minute 44 second attack, Diaz Gaskin, Robinson and Grayson entered the Moonlight Party Store on Harper around 11 p.m. March 28, 2014. Owner Basim Sulaka stood up and in less than 20 seconds was shot in the back with Diaz Gaskin's 9mm handgun. Vivian Sulaka, Basim Sulaka's sister, said he was a peaceful man who didn't keep a gun at his store nor did he install thick plexiglass. During closing arguments, Richard Glanda, lawyer for Diaz Gaskin, who is said to have shot Sulaka, said his client thought the gun's safety was on. Yet, unconvinced, the jury found all three guilty, and so all three culprits have been sentenced to life in prison without possibility of parole for their crimes. What more could you possibly want to take from this family, yet insult them and threaten them and say, this ain't over yet? I know I wasn't talking to them. I know for a fact I wasn't. Well, who were you talking to? I was talking to my family. And you know what? If I could give you an extra 10 years, I would, but I can't. Number one, George Goel Thomas. Convicted gang boss George Goel Thomas has been sentenced to life in prison for slayings and other crimes he orchestrated from his jail cell. The marathon trial against Thomas and 16 others concluded in the Western Cape High. Six other gangsters have also been sentenced to life behind bars. All the convicts were tried under the Prevention of Organized Crime Act for crimes committed between 2006 and 2010, ranging from slaying to conspiracy to commit slaying and racketeering. Thomas will serve seven life sentences concurrently for the crimes he masterminded between 2006 and 2010. Judge Chantel Fortuin says Thomas and 16 henchmen showed no remorse deliberately and willingly carrying out hits to instill fear in the community. My whole life sick. The person that I am today, I'm going to be brutally honest. I'm not saying I, I regret it because, but what I know for a fact, if I could have changed some things, I wouldn't be here where I am now. The National Prosecuting Authority has welcomed the sentence, saying it's a victory in the war on organized crime. Meanwhile, Correctional Services has launched an investigation into how Thomas arranged several crimes from behind bars. Goeld, he made over 30,000 cell phone calls between 2008 and 2010 while awaiting trial. Thomas systematically planned the slayings of several people, including potential state witnesses, while he was an awaiting trial prisoner at five different facilities. The court heard how Thomas had turned the prisons into his personal headquarters and terrorized correctional service officials. During the trial, the convicted gang boss claimed he only attacked prison warders in retaliation after they hurt him but Judge Fortuin said it was this brutal nature she considered when she handed down the life sentences. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.